Welcome to the fourth official installment of the VO2 Max Productions training series. I'm your host Sage Canada, here to answer your distance running questions. As promised, uh, we're going to go with the comment that got the most thumbs up from our last training talk video. And again, feel free to comment below this video uh, so we could continue on in the series. And so, here we go with 11 thumbs up. We have negative splits 06 again. Uh, winning the, the question, and he writes, For training talk number four, can you possibly discuss some of the workouts and training routines that you personally think have helped you the most? Specific workouts, miles per week, supplemental training, rest recovery, etc. And he's asking in college and when I ran for the Hanson's Brooks Distance Project. Uh, thanks for the feedback, and also actually thanks to everyone who provided great questions and great feedback. Uh, I really appreciate all the support. And to answer this one, I'm actually going to even go back to some of my high school training, uh, stuff I learned from high school, and stuff I've also learned recently in the last year uh, doing some ultra marathon and trail racing, mountain racing, because uh, I think it's all applicable to this. And I don't want to rant on for too long, so I'm going to kind of oversimplify things and break things down into three basic concepts or principles and kind of hopefully use some examples uh, that you guys find useful. Uh, but I'll start off with discussing some of my background uh, in, in what I've learned, some influences over the years. And my high school coach Bruce Sinkbile, who got me into running, uh, was, was a big influence. But then also in college uh, had Let's Run.com co-founder Robert Johnson at Cornell University uh, was my distance coach there. And his sidekick, John Kellogg, also of Let's uh, was really the training guru. And we would bounce ideas back and forth a lot. Uh, and they had a lot of principles that I still use today. And he even let me run a marathon in college. Uh, so there was, there was that ideas there. And then also, obviously, at Hanson's Brooks and now in, in ultra running. But I actually learned a lot also through my own experiences and trial and error, uh, my own failures in overtraining, uh, things like that. And then I'd say a major, major influence uh, was reading books, Arthur Linyard, Co, uh, Fitzinger, Canova, Benson, just to name a few. Uh, no, I know I'm missing Daniels, I think I said uh, earlier in a video, but my teammates also in the college environment, well, high school, college, and at Hanson's Brooks, uh, and even runners in the community now that I meet from reading blogs or, or seeing articles online, uh, all heavily influenced what I try to preach today at least and what I do in my own training. And you know, you learn a lot from every runner, different runners, uh, doesn't matter what speed they're running, uh, different levels of experience and different ages. And you could kind of see what systems work over time for you know a lot of people. And so there are some general things that I want to talk about today that hopefully you could apply to your training and find useful. So the first thing I want to talk about is your weekly mileage or your mileage totals, how much you're running. And this is my philosophy is that, you know, quantity is better than quality uh, when it comes to this. And that's kind of a generalization, but if you want to improve, if you want to reach that next level, that next plateau in fitness, uh, a good way to do that is to increase your weekly mileage. And whether you're running you know, 35 miles a week or 100 miles a week, it, it really doesn't matter. It's all relative to what you've done in the past and what your, what your injury resistance is uh, to some extent. And you know, I know a lot of people, most people, uh, work 9 to 5 and they, you know, they have kids or they have family obligations. And so it's really hard to get your run in. Uh, everyone's you know, really pressed for time, uh, most people at least. And so... You know, it is a big sacrifice, and so, you know, I, I understand that, and it, it is hard to get your mileage up uh, with the time constraints, but you do what you can with the time you have, and if you're running maybe 30, 35 miles a week, uh, if you could get that up into the 40s, you're going to be a lot better off, and the easiest way to do that, I don't always believe in the, you know, the 10% rule where you slowly increase your mileage, uh, is to just add some easy runs to your schedule easy mileage, easy paced runs, conversational pace. And it could just be, you know, running eight miles instead of five miles on a Monday 
or getting in you know a little bit of a longer run on the weekend, uh, maybe two moderately long runs on Saturday and Sunday when you have time. Um, but doing these miles easy, these extra miles come in at a jogging pace maybe sometimes uh, for some people because it's really more of a recovery thing and your body's already going to be stressed enough just with an increase in mileage and an appropriate jump just to throw some numbers out there for an example would be if you're running you know 35 miles a week you could go up to 42 maybe the next week but maybe you go back down to 38 after that uh, and then over you know six months maybe you get up into the 50 mile range um, but it's really just the easy miles you don't have to be doing extra marathon race pace miles or extra workouts that are you know super fast you you could run slow and just relax and just padding your mileage uh, is really going to help develop your aerobic system and also your skeletal muscular system uh, as long as you don't get hurt uh, and that's really a key there is you you increase your mileage up to a point but you know, if you know if you do it too fast you will get hurt you will get overtrained uh, something will break so you do have to be careful with that but general rule increase your mileage, you will improve. So the second key point I want to make, and I've learned this over the years, uh, is to periodize your training. And by periodization, we're talking about breaking your training into phases. So usually I'll, I'll look at my season, I'll look at my race that's coming up, and hopefully it's you know several months in advance at least, and you work backwards from there. And so you say, hey, like the last couple weeks maybe I'm tapering, and then before that maybe I'm I'm, I've done a couple of VO2 max workouts, for example. Uh, but before that, you're, you're building a big aerobic base. Maybe you're coming off of a break of no running or cross-country skiing or whatever. Uh, so you have to slowly first work your mileage up. And so maybe, you know, maybe it takes a month to get your mileage up to the level you want it at. And maybe you have to slowly introduce long runs. And maybe your, your long run only starts off at 12 miles, but after two months, maybe you're hitting a 20-mile long run. Uh, things like that, and also looking at what system you're targeting uh, per segment. And usually I break my training into blocks of four to eight weeks at a time. And I'll be looking at, you know, training more of my lactate threshold, uh, doing a little bit more tempo run emphasis early on before I do some of the VO2 max workouts, some of the harder workouts that are more demanding, that will be faster, that kind of capitalize on all those slow endurance gains because it, it usually takes longer to develop uh, the long run strength and things like that than the shorter speed stuff and so usually it, you see this in most programs that the, the faster workouts uh, the VO2 max workouts come a little bit later in the training cycle uh, but just the whole concept of sequencing your workouts of always changing something uh, whether it's mileage or intensity or even the recovery in a workout is going to be a different variable that's going to provide a stimulus to your body because your body is an organism and it responds to different stimuli. It needs change to turn on and off those genes that will activate uh, processes in your body so that you could reach that next plateau of fitness. And you, it, It's a matter of, of stressing your body and then recovering and then super compensating. Uh, your body adapts to the new stress and as long as you're not injured or overtrained or you know, deficient in iron or getting sick or all sorts of these things, you're going to improve. And it's, it's a balance, but it's also it's science. And uh, you could figure it out, and some people get more lucky at other times than others. And it, it is a fickle sport, but that's also why it's so rewarding when you make these breakthroughs in fitness. And if you, you, know, if you follow the path, uh, if you follow a training program that allows for this, eventually it's going to pay off. And that's really the the point I want to drive home with that and just the changing of the training cycle because if you always follow the same seven seven day or you always follow the same weekly plan seven days after seven days week after week month after month year after year uh, you, you could improve for a while but eventually you're gonna need something new you're gonna need you know some different types of workouts or some higher mileage or some new stimulus to get you to that next level so finally, the, the last point I want to make, and this is in terms of workouts, what you know, key workout I think is most effective for distance runners, whether you're targeting a 5K, uh, I'd say maybe closer to 10K, because 5K is still on the faster side, but let's say 10K up to a marathon, um, and maybe a 50K. 
and that's going to be lactate threshold or tempo run training. And I think this is a real key to long-term success because it develops your aerobic system while developing your running economy, your running efficiency over longer periods of time. And this is something you could continue on working on, you know, for years and years and years. And it, unlike VO2 max, where you're going to hit, you know, a peak in VO2 max in your early 20s most likely, uh, just due to the fact of your maximum heart rate and um, lung capacity and basic speed, lactate threshold you could continue improving uh, for decades even. And that's the reason why you see people, you know, running PRs in their 40s or even 50s. Uh, runners that have been running for years are still improving. And it's because of, of their efficiency, their aerobic efficiency, and their lactate threshold that's very well trained over the years. And the, most, the best way to do that is to do it through tempo run workouts. And an example of a, a tempo run that I like to do uh, would be a continuous run of about 5 to 10 miles, depending on, on your uh, weekly mileage. And to do this run, you know, starting around marathon race pace and then speeding it up, doing a negative split run, where you're, you're lowering the pace, uh, maybe you get down to close to your 10K race pace, for example. Maybe it's only half marathon race pace. Uh, it doesn't really matter because you give yourself a little bit of flexibility over the course of the run. So say, say for example, you're running a six mile run continuous and you know, you're know you starting at 8.30 and you're going to bring it down and your goal is to bring it down close to eight minutes maybe, eight flat, uh, which is maybe 15 seconds a mile slower than your 10K race pace. That would be an appropriate type of workout. and. Maybe you don't always you don't bring it down in a linear fashion. Maybe you do 8:30, 8:20, 8:18, 8:16, 8:16, 8 8 uh, flat at the end. Uh, that wasn't six miles, but like that. And you know, but maybe you have a bad day and you're just running 8:20s basically the whole way, but the effort increases. Uh, that's a good solid workout, and you don't kill yourself. You don't flood the system with lactic acid. You're right around 85 to 90 percent of your maximum heart rate. Uh, but you get in a lot of volume at a high aerobic effort. And that's really the key to building strength, to building your aerobic fitness. And it helps preserve your fitness over time. And you can slowly lower your threshold through these type of workouts, through mixing it in with another example workout, which I'll say here, would be two mile repeats. And I use these in college. I use them at Hanson's Brooks. I still use them now. Very effective. Uh, working on that more intense range of your lactate threshold. Uh, running two mile repeats, and you might only do three, you might do four, uh, I'd usually do four or five, and that's a big workout, because uh, we're talking about eight to ten miles at a pretty high intensity pace. But you're doing a two mile repeat, uh, maybe you're doing it on the track, maybe it's on the road, maybe it's on a trail, uh, but you're doing it at that intensity up to 90 percent of your maximum heart rate. And for a lot of people, it's going to be, you know, 10K pace plus about 10 or 15 seconds a mile. Uh, for, for me, if, if you're under 90 minutes for a half marathon, it's going to be closer to your half marathon race pace. Uh, but it's a real specific intensity. And the, sh the rest in between each two-mile repeat is relatively short. Uh, I usually go with around five-minute rest. So the rest is a lot shorter than the actual interval. And it's, it's usually better to do an active recovery in this and keep your heart rate relatively elevated. But it's still, it's not a killer workout. It's not something where you're burning lactic, you're feeling the burn of the lactic acid, and you're breathing so hard you can only say one word at a time. It's, it, you should be able to blurt out maybe a sentence at a time. Uh, but it's a steady effort. It gets increasingly hard. Uh, maybe you're doing it as a slight negative split towards the end. And it, you know, it's going to slowly lower your lactate threshold. And something you have to be patient with because most people run these too fast and it, you, you screw it up if you get a high concentration of lactic acid in your system too early. Uh, so you do want to be careful with that and be conservative with the pacing there. But great in building strength and great in getting in a lot of high mileage quality work. And uh, just I think that really pays dividends in the long term uh, for most distance runners. So that's my spiel for this training talk. Again, uh, thanks for all the support and comments. I really appreciate all the feedback. And stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.